So you've talked about imposter syndrome on your Instagram page. Mm-hmm. Let's, jump into, let's jump into that kind of how did you notice that you were experiencing imposter syndrome and kind of what does it mean to you on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. Imposter syndrome is widely felt and I am someone who takes a lot of pride in my work. However, I also fall into that trap of if I'm resting, if I'm not doing X, Y, Z productivity, I'm not doing enough. And so I kind of came to this moment that I realized I was having pretty severe imposter syndrome when I was like talking to like my friends and family about, I'm not doing enough, I'm behind. And they proceeded to list that I was publishing, working on my dissertation, exercising, meal prepping, taking good care of myself having a social life and they're like and you're, you're doing all of it really well and then you added an Instagram page and then you also added this and how can you say you're not doing enough that doesn't make any sense and hearing that outside perspective compared to my inner dialogue of I'm not doing enough it was just such a big contrast and I realized that my perspective was a bit distorted and it kind of lined up with imposter syndrome and I think it probably would have come to me eventually on my own reflection, but this is the importance of good support systems that they can point those things out to you and help you get to that conclusion faster. And so that has been my experience with imposter syndrome and how it kind of slowly seeps in to my life and then takes over in this more insidious type way than a concrete I don't think I'm doing enough I'm not good enough I don't belong here it doesn't come up that way it comes up in the little things in the small negative talk and I think that probably answers your question (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely so and do you feel like there was a point where it kind of clicked for you where you where you agreed with it like oh this is imposter syndrome this is something that's in my head something I'm I'm kind of downplaying what I'm doing did it ever feel like you could well did you ever convince yourself that it wasn't imposter syndrome and that the things you were thinking were true and kind of what did you do in your head about that was it mainly your support network kind of raising you up or is there anything that you did where you found that doing this do this one quick Mm -hmm. to combat imposter syndrome what did you do to kind of combat that on your own yeah well I think that once I saw it it was clear but the maintenance piece which I think is what you're kind of alluding to has been having positive habits that remind me that I'm I'm doing a lot so not only do I have to-do lists I have all done lists, right? Being able to actually see everything I did is a big marker of, oh wait, you actually did a lot of things today, right? Because sometimes two or three hours pass by with a million small tasks. You sent this email, you sent that email, you responded to this call, you read that one chapter. And at the end of the two hours, and I think this is the scary part of a PhD in any graduate program, is there's no piece of work to show at the end. There's no like, here you go. I have this concrete, tangible object that shows all the work I did. You're just kind of sitting there like, okay, well, there's nothing as far as a product in front of me, what have I spent the last two hours doing? And so having these kind of markers of things that you've gotten done. And I think the other piece has been the support system, like having people that keep me grounded. And then the last thing is kind of these like parasocial relationships on social media, where you can see a lot of other students um, or even like young professors having a similar experience. And I think that that in itself is very validating and can bring you out of that bubble 
of self-doubt.